we'd like everyone to be seated and relaxed and enjoy the day. Thank you. Could you please sign in if you haven't done so already? I'm just going to send this around and let you know that you have to sign in. Thank you. Hey! i like, on behalf of the Illinois Department of Natural Resources, my name is Jeffrey Jones, and I would like to welcome you to our Fall Fest, Fall into Wolf Lake, here at William Power State Park. This has been an exciting, exciting week for us. We've had everything from a movie night, we had a 5K, today we have Family Outdoor Recreation Day, uh, we've had a historical day, we've had farmer's market, and we're going to be bringing more of these type of activities to William Powers, to the Calumet region, and to the community that we serve. On behalf of DNR, again, I'd like to say to the families, thank you for coming out, to our elected officials that we have here, to all of the dignitaries and people that have come from far and wide, the volunteers, the organizations that are represented from big, Boy Scouts of America. We have Chicago Fishing Kids out here, Eat Place, Fishing Buddies, uh, Open Lands, just to name a few. Not, not excluding anyone, but I'd like to say thank you all and welcome again for making this week, especially this day, a success. I'm going to bring up our director. This was part of his vision for William Power State Park, and it's only going to multiply. So at this time, I'd like to bring up my director, Mark Miller. Oh, this was set up for Jeffrey. That's not fair. I was told to make the adjustment. For the vertically challenged. Well, good morning, everybody. It's really great to have you all here. On behalf of Governor Quinn and the Illinois Department of Natural Resources, we're so glad to be here at William Powers uh, for this event, for this week-long culmination of events that really ties together a community to this amazing resource that we're here in, William Powers. And William Powers is our only Department of Natural Resources state park inside Cook County. And we've got great forest preserves. That's absolutely fantastic. But this is ours here for the whole state. And there's so many tremendous things here. Behind me, there's six miles worth of shoreline for fishing opportunities. We've got trails. We even have waterfowl hunting when it's in season in the fall and winter. Um, this is a tremendous place. And thanks to uh, the work of many, many people, and through the leadership of Senator Trotter, we have had this um, amazing new center here, an interpretive center, so that we can better serve the community and tie in um, the programs that we can offer for education, for conservation, and to help connect children with the outdoors. Governor Pat Quinn tells me all the time, leave no child inside. And a lot of our programming is done just for that. And our Office of Community Outreach, which Jeffrey is the director of, uh, helps us uh, work in those goals of leaving no child inside and getting everyone access to the outdoors. Uh, his new boss, Mr. Michael Howard, is our deputy director. We're so glad to have him on here from Eden's Place. He's been a friend of mine for a long time. And I'm just going to tell one quick story, Michael. When, when I sat down next to him at a, at a Chicago Wilderness event, when I, I must have been fresh off the boat, man. It was just like two or three weeks after being director, Mr. Howard tells me, <laughs> so how come you're not in my neighborhood? And I said, I want to fix that. Let's do it. And we've done it together, and you've been tremendously helpful. And uh, uh, thank you, Michael and Jeffrey. Our site superintendent here, Chris Rollins, is absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah. 
I mean, this is this is a fantastic team, and we want to continue to move forward here. I also want to tell you a little bit about uh, more of the vision for this area, for the state park, and really uh, the tremendous resources that we have here. In 2012, Governor Quinn started an initiative called Millennium Reserve. Millennium Reserve is you know, several hundred square miles, if you count, I think that's about right, um, from the south side to Chicago, the banks of the Chicago River, on through Lake Calumet and down south. There are tremendous opportunities for restoration, environmental restoration, for economic restoration and for connecting communities together and to restore, while respecting our cultural heritage here, restore all those things and make it better. And today we're going to um, uh, be putting out a tremendous resource to help people find all of those hidden gems, not so hidden like William Powers, but hidden <laughs> gems. And we have a guidebook for the Millennium Reserve and we have some copies here. I'm gonna hold this up for us. So this is out fresh today. In fact, this is the first time I've held one in my hands. Uh, tremendous work by our Millennium Reserve team. I'm sorry? <laughs> Blue Stem all helped us with this, and uh, we're really proud of the effort, support, and uh, uh, we, we couldn't do it without working together. So, all right, you know what? The thing about getting a director up here is you're going to have him talk too long, so i got to get off the stage. <laughs> But um, the thing is, we want to be here to provide access to everyone for conservation purposes, for education, and this center behind me is going to be a focal point in doing that. And one of the champions, chief champion for bringing this here is Senator Trotter. And what we'd like to do is invite the Hegwish Chamber of Commerce on stage here for a tribute. Yes. I had a couple of things written down that I wanted to say, but the first thing I got to do is come off and say, Senator Donnie Trotter is a, a friend, a friend of the Hegwish Chamber of Commerce and a friend of Hegwish. He's, uh, he's been here and he's, he's been here throughout the, uh, the last 20 years. The first time I met him, he swore me in as Chamber of Commerce president in 1996. So he's got a huge involvement. We've dragged him out here for parades, Almost got him ran over at a 5K run when he started it in the middle instead of off to the side. Yeah, we, we've had a, we've had a, a great run and we've been really blessed to have him here as as a state senator. And from start to beginning of this project, as a matter of fact, we've got three ex Chamber of Commerce presidents behind me that we've all participated. He's he's worked hard, and and I we're very thankful for him. But I have to remind him of the story that this doesn't look much like a swimming pool. Because this is the way, it's, that, the way it started. And it kind of starts as a sad story. There were two, two young men, uh, Matthew and Scott, uh, drowned in Wolf Lake in June of 1998. Uh, we were, uh, as a community, we were all affected by it. Uh, and it, it was incredibly sad. Uh, the senator at that time uh, took a personal interest in it and realized there weren't a lot of opportunities here for a lot of the young people. We have a trailer court not too far from here. The young people would come here and play, and unfortunately there were, weren't a lot of activities at the time, and we know what happened from there. 
we worked at it, and we had uh, several people. We had uh, a, a John Defoe who drew up some elaborate plans for a, a, a pool. But alas, this is a conservation area. It doesn't really blend well to something like a, a swimming pool. But we also, you know, the senator had the foresight to proceed with the project and the money that was appropriated. Uh, and hopefully, with in conjunction with the environmental groups in the area, we've got something for those kids to do, and that might be learn, uh, learn from, uh, learn for about the environment, learn about the lake, and hopefully learn learn the safety. But at, the, at this time, you know, we're like, once again, I we as a community have been very fortunate to have someone uh, bring bring something back home that we can use that we extols the, the the beauty of this of this park and uh, of course we've got a lot of events in the last couple days and, and showed what what we can do with a facility like this uh, senator thanks you've been a you've been a friend and you've got you got some friends behind you and uh, uh, I might even hand over the microphone to, no <laughs> Uh, thank you so very much. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. You know, th this has been a labor of love, and I want to start out by saying thank all of you who labored to make this happen. And I personally, and I'm sure the children, love what you have done. This is just, has been an adventure, no, no question about it. And my thinking of the Park District and, and what we do here in the state of Illinois uh, in our state parks uh, has evolved. I've come a long way, Bob, from the time when I told all sports fishermen they should take up golf. And, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I got beat for that, and I also had to have my own fishing class for, for, for kids for a couple of years as my tenants. Uh, but it was a learning experience for me, and I wanted to ensure that everyone had that learning experience, that learning opportunity. And it's because of the work of our partners of the community that we have now gotten this far. And it's only this far because we still have a long way to go to ensure that our children have every opportunity, not just to learn about nature, but just to learn about life. Because this is, coming out here is a life experience in itself. Uh, it's been great. I want to thank uh, Director Miller, uh, certainly who has kept this on his plate as a project that had to be done. And of course, our, our new site manager, uh, Chris Rollins, thank you so very much again for your vision and how to really bring this to fruition. And, and, and I'd be remiss if I didn't say thank you uh, for those people who aren't here and to those people like Saki, Saki of Villa, Villa, Villa Lobos, right. Uh, the Village Wolf, right, <laughs> to Saki. Uh, who um, I, I thought he was actually born out here. I mean, he, I mean, <laughs> you, know I mean? you talk about a, a nature boy, but he, he brought that love with him and, and everything that he did to bring this project to this point today. So I uh, thank again my, my partners down in the legislature. We have Marcus Evans here. Thank you so, so much, Marcus. We know from former state rep Connie Howard, this was her park. This is where she gave her picnic. This is where she brought her friends, family picnics, and, and, and everything. Because she saw all that this, the value of this, this particular park and what it meant to the community at large. So thank all of you. Keep up the great work. There's still a lot of work to do. Thanks to uh, the partnerships of the Boy Scouts uh, who have really filled a void. Of, of bringing youth out here, the Girl Scouts and, and all the other community groups. Thank you to Southeast uh, Environmental Council uh, who still keeps our feet to the fire knowing what's going on. And, and everyone else that, that makes this not just a good day, but a wonderful day. And to the leadership thing, I'm not a leader. We're not leaders, we're followers. It's what the community wants is how we actually do our job. Uh, the community wanted this, so thank you very much uh, for pushing this forward as well. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Trotter, for those very eloquent words.
Uh, Senator Trotter uh, recognized uh, a representative, Representative Marcus Evans, and I, uh, I'd like to ask if, you, if, you, if you'd like to say a word, you can come up. Nope, you're good. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a word about Marcus Evans. <laughs> this is, <laughs> Representative Evans has been a good friend to the department, and he has been extremely interested in Governor mm -hmm. Quinn's Millennium Reserve initiative and can see the vision for where we're going with working with communities, bringing people into nature, showing the economic opportunities. And uh, it's been my great pleasure to work with him uh, through this effort. And uh, I, I think he's a fantastic partner and I'm looking forward to many, many years of doing this kind of thing with Representative Evans as well. Thank you. No, I mean, we've given the speeches. I think Senator Trout covered it. Uh, this is a long, time coming. You have representatives before me. You got Senator Trotter, a person who's down at Springfield prioritizing these types of projects. I've been in for a couple of years now, so I'm following his lead, prioritizing our environment. I was just out of the country and we travel other places around the world. I mean, it's just despicable some of the things that's going on as far as some of the environmental problems. If you come back to Illinois, you see that we're prioritizing our environment, introducing new people to natural resources, to appreciate the resources we have here is definitely something I appreciate. And of course, I'll be a champion for. So thank you. I appreciate the time. Let's uh, get in there. Okay. I'd like to ask Jennifer Browning to come up. Uh, we have, um, as I said before, a new guidebook. I'm going to ask Jennifer to run through this a little bit and tell, her about, tell us about her involvement with Blue Stem, who put this together for us. After a year of planning, researching, writing, and designing, uh, Blue Stem Communications is really proud to unveil our uh, guidebook. And I say our, I've got to let go of that. It's your guidebook now. We created this for this, this community. Um, it's officially titled Explore the Millennium Reserve and Calumet Region, a natural and cultural guide to the region from Bronzeville to the Indiana Dunes. This book is a compelling guide to the natural and cultural assets of Millennium Reserve and the Calumet region. It's really designed for, um, for people who live in these communities. It's a guide to get out, to be able to um, help people get out and really explore the area. It celebrates the fantastic natural and cultural resources that are in this area. The guidebook has photos, it has great stories, it's got maps and lists of places to visit and what you can expect when you go, to, when you go there. The guide was really made possible by a very generous grant from the Illinois Department of Natural Resources through the Coastal Management Program. Uh, we also received additional funding from ComEd, which we're very grateful for, and the Chicago Southland Convention and Visitors Bureau also supported this project. Uh, Blue STEM is an environmental uh, communications nonprofit group, and our goal is to connect people with nature in, in a variety of ways. And this guidebook is just one of the ways that we work on these issues. But this was not our project alone. I feel like <clears throat> we kind of got it started and got it kicked off and brought lots of different people to the table. And then the folks from the community, the people who have the passion and love for this area, they're the ones that helped guide the content, who helped identify the spots that could not be left out of the guidebook, and who were very passionate through the entire process. There are over 300 volunteer hours of time put into this. People really um, were very excited about this process, and today I'm very excited to be really finally unveiling this book. From birding spots and boat docks to parks and breweries, Millennium Reserve and Greater Calumet regions are teeming with natural and cultural resources, and you know this. With the diverse and sometimes rare natural landscapes, there come opportunities for human exploration and recreation. We can fish, boat, hunt, bike, 
bird watch, cross country ski, swim, picnic, wander, daydream, meditate, and be at peace among the rivers, trails, lakes, preserves, museums, and cultural institutions we have here. Yet over the past 200 years, humans have damaged and threatened much of the original natural diversity of the greater Calumet region. Humans have also preserved this area. And today is a really triumphant day to look at where the, the natural areas here have been and where they are today and the fact that everybody has come here to embrace this. The guidebook, which is right here, I'm very excited about it. I just got my hands on this yesterday for the first time, so you are, you are right at the front of this. This book can be downloaded online at millenniumreserve.org, and we will have copies here today for distribution. So um, thank you everybody for coming today. I hope you'll be able to take this guidebook and use it to explore this amazing area. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. My good friend and partner, Michael Howard, I'm gonna ask him to come up and acknowledge all the partners that I can't even begin to acknowledge and making this possible day. Mr. Howard. Thank you, Director Miller. I'd like to just thank our director of IDNR for being the best director of natural resources in America. He has really truly been a leader and an advocate for environment and for people all throughout the state of Illinois. Give him a hand. Again, my name is Michael Howard as the newest deputy director for the state's Department of Natural Resources. It's been an honor to discover a great team of employees that are doing wonderful work all around the state. My only uh, contention has been, before coming on board, is that the state does such great programming that I wanted to expose a lot of their programming to youth on the south side of Chicago and the surrounding suburbs. And so the, 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 the director has been very supportive of that, and today is like a big kickoff of what we're here to do. And I want to thank uh, all of uh, the Department of uh, Outreach for, from DNR for all of their hard work for putting this event together. I'd like to thank uh, the staff here at William Powers, uh, Chris Rollins, and Barry for all of their hard meetings and, and hard putting together and setting up. I'd like to thank all of the uh, DNR supporters, like the coastal people, uh, Sue Ellen, who's been behind the scenes getting things done quietly, who's been uh, just phenomenal and making things happen and getting the word out about the Millennium Reserve, which I'm hoping that you will really take a, book, a look at the guidebook and get into, which we want to thank Blue Stem again for. We'd like to thank uh, Tom Shepard for all of his hard work. And he's been helpful uh, for many, many years guiding DNR in terms of what's really relevant and important here. And so without further ado, what I'd like to do is thank all of the other partners that have helped plan this thing. We're talking about fishing buddies. We're talking about uh, Eden Place. We're talking about uh, Blacks, and Green. Blacks and Green. We're talking about all of the great partners. And if I miss you, you gotta forgive me because they're rushing me to get through this because <laughs> we're baking you folks out in the sun, they tell me. So we wanna go ahead and move on to the next part. I wanna bring up to you the gentleman that's going to be running this beautiful edifice that sits before you and the different programs here, Mr. Chris Rollins, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together for him. Thank you, Deputy Director Howard, uh, Director Miller, Senator Trotter, uh, all of you for coming out today. I, I see a lot of Hagwish regulars, so you can go ahead and throw it up and say, hey, if you're a regular here at Wolf Lake, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your continued support. Thanks for coming back today. We count on all of you and it's, it's everyone's part. We have young people here today that I hope are enjoying themselves and the many activities. And these folks get to stand a little taller today because they're standing on the shoulders of people who came before them and made all this possible. Thank you to the gentleman from the, uh, the Hagwish Chamber of Commerce. Thank you to all of you for your hard work and support. Um, Mr. Howard mentioned a few people just going to go through this very quickly because there are a few people on the committee that bear special mention. 
Uh, thanks to Deputy Director Howard. Thanks to John and Julian Kidd of Fishing Buddies. Couldn't have done this today without them. Thanks to Jeffrey Jones in our Urban Programs Office. Thanks to Diane Banta. Yes, Diane. Thanks to Barry Walker, uh, Laura Barkhausen, uh, Nambi Mangan. These were the people who were part of our committee that worked for many, many weeks to put it all together and, and really bring together a fantastic week of activity. I want to thank the park staff, Terry Zavko, Mark Lulo, and Big Paul. These guys worked hard this week to get the park in shape and, and ready for our activity. Uh, most importantly though, I want to welcome you today to our visitor center. And if you haven't been inside, to invite you to come inside today and, and take a look. We're very proud of it and we're so excited. Uh, we really feel like we're on the verge of being able to offer so much more to the community and we want this to be your home. Uh, the DNR and all of us in the agency feel that this is our center of activity in the Millennium Reserve and you'll hear a lot about that in the days and weeks and months to come. But this is where we put our stake in the ground. This is your state park right here in your neighborhood. So thank you all for coming out. Come on in and see the visitor center today and you're all most welcome. All right, we're going to cut a ribbon here first. Hang on. Senator Trotter, we can get everybody up here to cut the ribbon. I've been missing you guys. It's been a long time. It has. How are you doing? We're driving. We're driving. Yeah, she's uh, she's ready. Yeah, 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 she's ready. But what Bridging the Gap does with them is take these really bright kids and say, hey, it can't all be about effort with the thumbs. You need to be out in the world and you need to be out in nature. So they write applications for parks and for recreation. And so they spend part of their day here doing their programming and the rest of their day outside. We take them through archery, uh, fishing, rowing, all sorts of different activities so they get a more well-rounded kind of life. And so the guys who lead that effort, uh, Bridging the Gap, they are the ones who installed uh, the AV system for us and it's fantastic. It does everything we could ask for and more. If you come in here with a smartphone, if you've got an iPhone, the system right here can pick up the signal from your phone and project an image right there on the screen. But yeah, so, sure, so, from any of our TVs, we have the audio, and the conference room, we have the audience, we have the center, we have the center together, we have the TV, we have the audio, we have the audio, we have the audio, we have the audio, People, the theme that nature, if you give it even a little crack, man, it, it, it manages, it wills out. And this particular area, the Kayamet region, is, is rich with that. We've had industry and man made intervention of every kind in this area. And yet, we find some of the rarest natural things that you ever want to hope to find. Right out here in this little tree, we found a Iowa darter, one of the rarest fish in Illinois. And when we first found it, we didn't believe it. Put it in the jar, send it to the U of I. And you might be the one, yeah, where'd you catch it? And caught it in Indian Creek, right out here at the cool place. Oh, it can't be. Send it to the University of Ohio. They confirmed it. Guys came back out here and actually stayed in the creek and found four more of them. So, I would argue here. We have threatened and endangered pieces you don't know, find that. Right? And kind of the, the, the rare aspect of it is all the water in this place is really Lake Michigan water. We have two factories over on the Indiana side, uh, Cargill and Weaver Brothers, who have a permit to draw water in Lake Michigan, use it only for non contact cooling purposes, and then discharge it. They draw it from the lake, they use it to cool, and then they discharge it to the lake. So it's filtered Lake Michigan water. Our water out here is crystal clear. If you go look at the creek or in any of these areas, you'll see it's crystal clear. So the environment's really good here. The fishing's really good here. There's a large presence of rare plant animal species. But people always think about the industrial aspects of the area. So when, when did it become 
I would say a lot of quality of the I can gather in the reports I've read. Since the water quality is really steadily increasing. You know, it's gotten to a point now where it's very much a um, mostly because we don't really have that much new industry around. And the few people that we have to we keep a really tight rate on. The folks over here that run uh, Wolf Lake Terminals, the transfer station, they're probably our greatest concern because they ship everything, rail car and truck, and they store everything. So we watch them closely. We have fence line monitoring going on between them. Like I said, the only other two major industrial dischargers is open and, and no for them. They're not doing any sort of process water or any sort of contaminated water coming in. And that's been, I know those permits stay from the 90s. So we really tightened down from what uh, Cargill and the corn channels people used to do over there, that kind of stuff. Yeah, all that really got reined in in the 90s. And so since then, water quality is great. The Great Lakes Combine is sure is it? So that's why we have this Yes. Yes, and, and actually, actually, the Northeast Indiana uh, Industrial Group for wastewater was a big influence on the lake. And, you know, we're a bi state lake, so what's good for them is good for us because they're receiving that water first and then we're getting it. So, when they begin to make improvements over there, and some of those were due to the Army Corps project that happened, which it's going on seven, eight years ago now. Unfortunately, we weren't able to take advantage of that because we didn't have our state matches. So when Indiana did, and they decided to naturalize their lake shore, that's when also the pressure was upped on industry to make sure that the lake stayed. Yeah. And so that's that's been a, a great benefit. So we're hoping this year to get in on that cycle with Army Corps to do the same thing on our side of the lake. So a lot of the things that you see where uh, the lake shore is not naturalized, there's exposed slag and other things that are remnants from the construction that they did when they used the lake as a borrow pit from the Skyway. We're hoping to make improvements on all of these things in terms of uh, improved use for uh, recreational use, but also improved environment for water bodies. And we're still part of the Great Lakes Task Force. Okay. As a matter of fact, we just had a meeting a month ago uh, in Quebec. Mm -hmm. So we did that whole deal. So we this uh, relationship with Canada, you know, and of course, you know, the other. Great well, and here it's, 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 a, it's a constant little bit of give and take with our friends in Indiana. You know, North Northeast Indiana or Northwest Indiana is heavily industrialized. Nobody wants the job train to stop running over there, but it, it impacts us in interesting ways, like with the pet coke issue and other things. People have manufacturing jobs and do processes over there, but their waste materials are coming here. And that, that ends up being a difficult thing for us. Just stones throw from the park, literally. Uh, where we had a situation with people uh, stockpiling uh, pet coke that the governor got involved in, ultimately the mayor got involved in, and we, and we resolved. But it, it means we have to keep that outreach open, and we have to keep it active. And what we're finding is, by and large, people in, uh, in Northwest Indiana are, are cooperative, and our, our goals are the same. It's just finding that mesh. We'll be working on the Bi-State Trail with them. Uh, to make that connection, so now you'll be able to get off the Burnham Trail, Greenway Trail here, right through my park, uh, get on the trail on the Indiana side, and ride all the way to Munster. So, uh, good things are happening on both sides, and cooperation is is good, but it's it could always be better. Uh, you know how those things are. So, we uh, <laughs> right, we we hope for the happy intersection of things they're doing and we're doing, or you know where we both want to move forward with it. But uh, but yeah, things are good. Uh, so as far as water quality goes and fish and wildlife go, things have never been better on our side of the lake. And when you ask the question, how long it's been? Uh, just think it's like it was good in the Ryan administration. Wow. Cool, really. When the original appropriation happened? Yeah. Oh, wow. How did that build Illinois after? <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere around there. I didn't realize it was that far back. Almost 15. Wow. Well, congratulations. This is no, congratulations to you guys. What groups do you have coming in? Who, who oh gosh, where do I start? Okay, a lot of our partners who are here today come in. We uh, we just did ink a deal with um, uh, the Girl Scout Council for all of this portion of Illinois and Indiana. Sixty thousand. Girl Scouts, where we, we will be an official issuer of merit badges for Girl Scouts here now. They'll be able to come here and do a variety of different projects. 
We have connections with uh, the Citywide Council and several other individual Boy Scout and Girl Scout, uh, Boy Scout and Cub Scout troops. Uh, Field Museum, one of our biggest partners, Mighty Acorns, which I'm sure you're probably familiar with their program. That's the grade school age children. Throughout the year, we run programs with Mighty Acorns. And then uh, the next bump up for kids is um, Simbi, uh, Calumet is my backyard, and that's all the way through high school, kids doing stewardship. So we have that connection with, through the Chicago Public School System and through uh, the Field Museum, we're doing that. Um, with uh, John Kidd and Fishing Buddies, we do programs throughout the year with them, and in fact, uh, they decided to expand the range of programming they're going to offer to include archery instruction this year. So we tried that. We had uh, three different sessions of camps during the summer while the kids were out where we did fishing and archery together and it was a big success. So we had to turn people away because we, you know, it's one of those things where it's a safety issue. You have to have an instructor-student ratio and we, we had more people signing up than we could find instructors to serve them. So next year we'll expand on, on, uh, on that partnership, but it's a variety of people. Winter programming. Winter programming, a lot of that is, uh, we're really starting to evolve with it. Um, this past week, as part of the expo, we tried um, doing a movie night that was, and we showed uh, Fern Gully, which is a movie about conservation and, and, and the kind of environmental themes. Um, we have a partnership with the Harrington School of Photography, and so those students come in and do their photography during spring and summer, and then they're going to do their exhibiting in the fall, and we did that for the first time, big success. Um, Southeast Environmental Task Force, uh, um, Peggy Salazar and, and, uh, and the folks there. They also come in and they have uh, public meetings here during the fall and winter. Um, the Calumet Stewardship Initiative, they're kind of, we kind of taken them under our wing and adopted them as another group that uses our space. Uh, they're doing the teacher training for um, conservation stewardship for Chicago Public Schools. So they bring in groups of teachers, educate them about how to use materials and, and how to make the field trips coincide with their classroom teaching and we do the teacher training here for that. And we also did uh, some odd and end things. We had the Chicago Fire Department rescue dog guys come in, use the park and, uh, and hide things around the park and then work their dogs outside and then come in here and do the classroom portion for that. So all kinds of things, which by the way, the fire department's coming today too. So I know the chief would not be happy if I didn't mention that they, they said they were gonna come in and help us with the effort. So uh, House 25 right up the road from us is coming today. With all those great things, do we charge anybody? No, all free, all free programs, all free programs. Always free. So there's no excuse not, not to right. take all, part of Always free programs, and, and, and we, we really do emphasize that with the community. Yeah. And, and, and some of it, frankly, is... We know the cost of everything. Well, yeah. we, we right. I mean, some of it, frankly, is... now to go into the historical sites sure. and everything else and cut yeah. staff. No, all our programs here are free. how does that impact you guys as far as our steady budget, right. you know? So no growth budget. The, the parks are doing okay because we had the infusion of uh, the two dollar license plate fee several years ago. We actually are doing better. We're getting equipment. Uh, I don't know if you've got to pick up trucks, but uh, you need you keep hope too soon. Yeah, and I, we're hoping to get electric trucks here. We have an yeah, electric charging station uh, for electric vehicles here, so we're hoping that we'll be able to go electric with our fleet. But, but it's staffing, those things, like we cut staffing and we've been hiring, hiring, for you. For you. We've been hiring more more folks and uh, now other parts of the agency aren't going to be so lucky, but this is a you know, dedicated funds for this. Thank you. And uh, so we're doing all right. And uh, Hi, neighbors. For the most How part. How are you? Good. Hey, so we are. We, we are hiring. Trip. I'm probably yeah, because of the budget um, and how it's going to affect other parts of the agency. I have to tail off a little bit on supporting the parks so I can spread. I saw your son's around there. Keep yeah, yeah. 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 reduction. Yeah. Yeah. We have a 38 million GRF. Yeah. Latest budget. So, yeah, I've got some issues. Most of them are on my regulatory side. So, uh, so that's, that is an issue. Thank you. Uh, he always knows I come in to see <laughs> so, you know, I always come in and see the senator and talk about my budget in the spring. So, you know, General, we've got about two minutes. Okay. Uh, make your way out.